Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah, and you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession, and you know what we do? We enjoy it one nibble at a time. One nibble. Super spy nibble. Ooh, secret. Espionage. Questions. Twists. Turns. Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Argyle. We are here to discuss the new Matthew Vaughn movie, Argyle, which I'm sure is going to be the talk of the town because it's a Matthew Vaughn movie, one, and it's bananas, Mm -hmm. crazy bananas. Mm -hmm. Before we get into that, we have, at the end of this episode, we're going to be talking our review and our thoughts, then an exclusive interview, which Derek got to talk to Matthew Vaughn himself, the director. Very exciting. It was very cool. (laughs) We're best friends. We're not. But in my mind, we are. Spoiler, he loves libraries. Yay! Um, so that's great. <laughs> so that conversation will be at the end after a review. And then we'll come back and talk about that. So lots of fun things in this episode. Before we get into everything, throw some stars our way. Be a secret agent and throw some stars to let us know that you understood the assignment. And you gave us a review. Still on our way to 200 reviews. So let's get there. By the end of 2024, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, and then last but not least, we have a Patreon. If you want to support the show, you like the show, go on there. Dollar a month. Get exclusive things. Uh, lots of fun on there. We have a Discord. All of that amazing stuff. Everything that we talk about is always in the show notes. So just uh, go down there. Just click down below. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, major, major, major spoiler alert, both in our review right now and in the interview with Matthew Vaughn, spoilers all over the place. So you have been warned. Warned. It's very confidential going forward. So if you have not got the proper clearance or briefing, don't go ahead. Boy, you are killing it today Ooh. on this episode of the pod. You know I love spy and espionage things. 007. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yes. All right. So let us officially take a bite of Argyle. Directed by Matthew Vaughn and written by Jason Fuchs, Argyle follows mild-mannered spy novelist Ellie Conway who is struggling with writer's block for the fifth installment of her series, Argyle. Heading home to mom's for inspiration with her cat, Alfie, in tow, she is launched into the middle of a plan centered on killing her. By her side is the rough-and-tumble real-world spy, Aiden, who is tasked with protecting her from the evil crime syndicate, The Division. Worlds become blurred for Ellie as her fictional creation becomes reality, and that reality isn't exactly as it seems. Oh, no, it's not. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like we do with these reviews, what is your thoughts? After we got out of the screening for it, how did you feel? I think going into it, having seen Kingsman, knowing what Matthew Vaughn is capable of, this met all the Matthew Vaughn criteria, right? It was like people dressed sharply, fantastically weird characters, a bunch of craziness that happens, great action, lots of twists and turns. And it was just so much fun. Yeah, I think this is one of those movies where I'm at Kingsman, great, great movie, kick ass, amazing, X Men First Class. I mean, he has a, a good track record for creating serious stuff, but also like zany and bizarre mm. things that just seem to work and this one i felt like he was experimenting right this is going to be one of those movies where if you don't surrender yourself to the chaos and just the bonkersness of it you're not going to have fun right right and this is just a movie to have fun mm-hmm. and i i really much enjoy that because i feel like we don't get those too often yeah i i feel like what he does so well is he takes something like spy with melissa mccarthy And he mashes it together with a James Bond movie, you know, like a newer Daniel Craig one, which is very serious. So he takes the best of both of those worlds. And I feel like you have to be willing to lean into that because you could so easily be like, oh, it was so ridiculous when this happened. It was so. But it's like that. the point of the movies is that it's breaking that spy genre. Yeah. And it's having fun. Right. Right. And I I know I said that word like three times already, but it's it, it is just fun. I will say it is a little long. It's quite a long movie. It's over two hours long, especially for like a spy romp. Mm -hmm. But like, I just felt like if you, you kind of just like, okay, I'm I'm here for this ride. I'm just going to see what happens by the end of it. Satisfied. Absolutely. You know, there wasn't, 
I would shave down some things, but those last two action sequences were so worth the wait because they're bananas. Yeah. I mean, should we just, let's just get into them, okay, right? Okay, sure. It, it's so the, the first one is, is that um, Ellie and Aiden are backed into a corner. There's oil slick everywhere. So the only way she can defeat the henchmen that are surrounding her is by taking her boots, stepping hard onto some knives, and ice skating with her gun. She's using her memory of actually being an ice skater to not only slice and dice them, but then use a gun at the end. Yeah. When she's just spinning and shooting, I was like, this is great. Yeah. And it's on oil. Like... <laughs> It, it was incredible. I, you know, I've seen other interviews and uh, Matthew Vaughn has said that that was actually one of the hardest action scenes to shoot. I would think so. Because it's so much with this ice skater whipping around the corners and the choreography with the guns and who's going down when. I can't imagine really kind of trying to keep that track of all that That's while you're creating it. That's why those people are paid to do what they do, right? It's Absolutely. Like you make it work. Yeah. I, I like the idea of going to work and being like, yeah, we have to shoot an oil slick ice skating gun scene today. There's a lot happening. It's going to be tough. <laughs> she's going to be spinning. She's going to be spinning and she's doing sow cows and stuff. <laughs> Axles. It's just going to be bonkers. The other scene that we were talking about is when Aiden and Ellie as well backed into a corner and have to get out of the armory. Just release one. I don't know why they have so many different color smoke grenades. I'm happy for it, but it is one of the most beautiful, you know, I don't want to call it a dream ballet. It was like a um, action ballet <laughs> almost. And they're dancing and there's smoke and the music. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. It's so much fun. It was, I mean, not to get, you know, too sentimental about it, but it really solidified their partnership and them <laughs> falling in love. This gorgeously choreographed smoke <laughs> dance, which is also them murdering a bunch of people yeah. that are surrounding them. I really like, though, that we were talking about how it could be like kind of serious, like it's the spy and then also it's like a comedy. And I like how these two action scenes, while they're unique and sure to be like crowd pleasers, but like we also have like straight espionage type action within the train. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I like the balance between them because we got those like trying to get around those people, killing all these people in the hallway, fighting people underneath four flo floorboards. It's great. I like the balance between the action as well. Yeah, 100%. That train scene is, uh, it's the first real world Ellie action scene that we see. And so what's happening is that, so we see a couple of di different vantage points, right? So we see Aiden fighting the people. And then we see her watching Aiden. We literally see her eyelashes as, yeah. we're, as if we're looking through her eyes. And then we see Argyle fighting them as well. So it's all pieced together into this like one fantastically fight choreographed scene. We also see, um, so Alfie played by Chip, who is Matthew Vaughn's real world son, feline son. <laughs> uh, we also see it through his little, like, I don't know, astronaut. <laughs> the cat carrier. The cat carrier yeah. thing. It's so great. And so we're getting flashes of what she's seeing, what's really happening, and it all comes together. It's like bullet train within 15 minutes, basically. Yeah. I, I like the different POVs. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, let's talk about the cast a little bit, right? Mm. And, and their stories in this. I, you know, the, the marketing in the trailer that you see for the movie very much just shows you the first like 10, 15 minutes or so um, with Henry Cavill, John Cena, Dua Lipa, all of them, um, Ariana DeBose. And... <laughs> It makes you think that like, oh, they're like fully in this movie and like Ellie is the subplot in mm -hmm. a way. It's the other way around, which Absolutely. I thought was kind of smart. You know, going into this, I was like, oh, they're really not in this. Interesting. Yeah. But so it made it fun for a normal person, an author to tag along with this spy and then hilarity ensues. Right. Mm -hmm. But I did like that they kept bringing them back. And towards the end, whenever we find out that the real Argyle is actually Ellie Conway. Yes. Who's Bryce Dallas Howard. It would just made it fun because then she could still be part of the action and ending up, you know, solving the whole conflict of the movie. Yeah. It was smart. It really was. I mean, I have to say, I think as a homosexual librarian watching this movie, it centers around an author and books and Dua Leap is in it. Granted, she's only in it for like <laughs> 10 minutes, but she does her Dua Lipa thing uh, and so that first set, that first thing that we see is Argyle fighting Dua Lipa and John Cena as well, sort of like his right-hand man throughout all of that. And so it is really quick and they do pop up throughout the movie, but you're right. It really does center on uh, 
Ellie and Aiden in mm-hmm. the real world. Mm-hmm. Now, rounding out the cast, of course, are two comedic but also dramatic geniuses, right? So we have um, Catherine O'Hara playing Ruth, you know, who, Emmy winning, Golden Globe winning, everything winning. Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek, of course. Mm-hmm. And we also have Brian Cranston uh, playing Ritter, who was like the evil big henchman yeah, of, division. of the division. Right. And uh, he, I mean, you know, he won an Emmy for Breaking Bad. He's been Oscar nominated, but we also know him as the lovable dad for Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Too. I, I really liked these two together. Um, this movie has so many twists and turns that like when after I would say after the 14th one, I don't I'm not actually counting, but like, you know, when it's revealed that her that the head of division is her parents, but then it's like, wait, no, they're not her parents. They just posed as her parents. And then it just kept going. I just kept going. Of course. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? But I liked it because then that gave us more Catherine O'Hara screen time that gave us more Brian Cranston screen time. Um, It was just fun. Like I know some people might be like, it's convoluted. It's just like whatever stuck to the wall they would do, but that's what made it fun because at one point I was just like, Oh, Mm. okay. Like, Somehow they were able to connect that <laughs> yeah, together. It, it was funny. Noah and I were able to see a screening of this at, uh, Universal offices in Manhattan. And it was Noah and I, and I felt like some, there was like four or five, like kind of maybe serious journalists, but you and I were watching it as like fans and viewers and having fun. And so when things were happening, like those reveals, we were like, oh, no way. We were, we were like we had fun. Ones. We did. We yeah. had a really good time. So like, if you want us to come and like give genuine reactions, just call us up. Like, totally. Yeah. Totally. Put us in a room. We are there for the action. We're always, I think the beauty of Noah and I is that we're always leaning in to what the movie is. We're always willing to give ourselves over to it. Yeah. We always look for the positive yes. part, right? It's like, yes, we can critique and we we're reviewers. So of course we'll do that. But like, that's not fun. Like, I want to be able to find the things I did like with the movie because I spent time, they spent time making it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an A for effort thing, but it's like, it's fun. Like, just have some fun. It's fun. I mean, just speaking about the fun, right? So there is the reveal that uh, Ellie is actually R. Kyle. That's her name, like Rachel Kyle. And so she's Argyle in reality. So when it is actually revealed that Catherine O'Hara isn't her mother, but is some sort of like winter soldier russian scientist hypnotist hypnotist or something that and she breaks out this accent you know and we learned that the kitchen that she was facetiming her from was actually in like the big division layer you know it's like yeah it's hilarious and and the whole thing that she lost her memory from an ice skating accident she fell in the ice and she couldn't remember anything it's just so silly it's not even like she got hurt in action it's like no yeah. she actually ice skated and she she ice skated almost to death she got hurt <laughs> i do want to say one of the mvps aside from Dua Lipa, um in this movie is sam rockwell i like so good i wasn't sure at first because like you never know what you're gonna get with like not sam rockwell but like having this type of character in a movie where so much funny stuff is happening around them but really leaned into it as aiden and Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell together, fantastic. Yeah, they like were, the chemistry was great. They were a lot of fun. And so the Aiden character has layers as well, right? So when we first see Aiden, he has the long hair. We think, oh, he's just there to protect her. But it's what we disguise. yes, but what we learn is so in the Argyle world, there's Argyle, and then there is John Cena who plays Wyatt, who mm-hmm. is like his best bud, right? We learn that our real R Kyle. Her best bud was Aiden. That was her Wyatt. So he's protecting her, playing along that she's just an author, but all the time knowing that they've actually been partners this entire time. Yeah, I like that. And he finds out that like, that's who she saw him as. He's like, oh, thanks. Yeah. (laughs) Big, big, burly dude. (laughs) Exactly. Who enjoys like a cappuccino or whatever in Greece. Yeah, it's pretty (laughs) fantastic. So I just like that Sam had to play those levels. And I mean, Sam Rockwell was freaking killing it in these action scenes and these mm-hmm. fight scenes. He had, he probably had the most work to do out of everyone. They all really put on their best action star boots. Yeah. You know, they, they all did stunts. Um, I was, I, you know, if I'm going to find a critique, I wish Dua Lipa was in it a little more because like, it's one of those things where like, I have a hair in my mouth. I'm sorry. A beard hair was just going in my mouth. <laughs> (laughs) 
you know, if I if I have to find like some critique as far as like the cast and stuff like that, I would say Dua Lipa being in it for like five minutes was disappointing to me because like I I'm not sure like she can act right, but like I want to see her mm. do it. Like I want to see is she a triple threat? I'm sure she is, but like I wanted to see a little more because the chemistry with her and Henry so good. You want to see Dua do it. I want to see Dua do it. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever the, <laughs> the Whirly Bird. Was one of the greatest things because it comes back again in the movie. But just seeing like it happen, that's like one of the first things that happens in the movie. And it's like, <laughs> OK. And the funny thing is, is that in that scene, it's supposed to be like this very sensual dance. And then the whirly bird is basically her with her legs spread eagle going on his shoulders with her crotch in his face. And it's not really that sexy. But, but they're so serious. But they're so serious about it. And we get these very close up shots of her face, of his face. And it's just too good. And like you said, the whirly bird comes back and I was, I was so entranced by the whirly bird and we, I was doing some research and I found out that whirly bird is British slang for a helicopter. Is that a made, real dance move? It's not. So the only whirly bird I could find was one that's like in jive and it's just two people kind of just like spinning together in rhythm. So it's not what we see it as in the is movie. Is this what you did? For like research, you're like, okay, I have to like do some research, whirly bird research. And you just went into like the dark web to that find That's exactly where I started my research. That was the most important detail of this movie for me, the whirly bird. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia uh, Bontella. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I liked the inclusion of her at the end. Um, I wanted more because like, I want to know who the keeper of the secrets really is mm. and what is going on with all of that. Um, because it felt very much like this is a thing that's happening. You're not going to know more about it until later, mm -hmm. you know, because there is, I think it was announced that there's like a series being planned with like the Ar real Argyle from this movie guy or whatever his name is, because we find out this is like in the Kingsman universe, which I believe you asked Matthew Vaughn about that. So like, we'll leave that discussion for like the creator to talk about. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's interesting that it's like hidden, right? That like you have to see the movie to then find out like, oh, this is part of his like Vaughniverse that yeah, he's created. I was saying it's like the KCU. It's like the yeah. Kingsman cinematic universe. <laughs> I, I did have some questions about that whole secret secret keeper. I was looking at that room trying to figure out what's really going on there. It's like, is it just like, I don't know, safety box deposit boxes. And she just has people's she keeps secrets. All yeah. The secrets. <laughs> exactly. They're all just flash drives all on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but what a job, you know, it's like, I have all How your secrets. How do you become the secret keeper? You just start collecting. <laughs> you're just a kid on the playground letting kids whisper to you. And then mm -hmm. you're like, I see some business. Yeah. <laughs> just in case their memories get wiped, yeah. they need to know all the secrets. <laughs> so what was, um, are you excited to see more? Like, do you, are you excited to see like the show? Do you think there's going to be more Argyle? Because it is a real book. Yeah. Written by a real Ellie Conway. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm curious if there would be more. Would you be open to that? I definitely would, because I think that what the picture that we have painted here is a very static moment in time. I think you could do a lot with this, whether it's with the actual Henry Cavill Argyle character or looking at Ellie Conway and seeing where she started. Because something that I was thinking about is who are her parents actually? Her real parents. Her real yeah. parents. What is their deal? Where are they? You know, are they something that can either... Was she trained to be a spy her whole life? Is it like a black widow situation? Does mm. she have parents? You Where's know? the red room? Where Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Especially at the end when um, Ruth, Catherine O'Hara's character comes out and literally is doing like a winter soldier thing is like saying a code to get to her deeper programming to kill Aiden. So mm -hmm. I think that um, there's a lot to play with there. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> I thought there could be the, um, the one, the only twist where I was just like, Come on. It was with Kira, Ariana DeBose's character, mm. where it was like a fan sent me a thing of like how to bring her back. And I'm like, the fan was her. You know, that was a thing that I meant <laughs> to look so into. Is there a little area of the heart that a bullet can go through? Oh, I'm sure. But it doesn't actually go through the heart. It just like goes through the aorta. Empty space. You know what I mean? The empty space. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I went to the twirly bird. Yeah. That was my research, not <laughs> the, the whirly read. bird. Oh, you're right. The whirly bird. How dare bird. you? Ah, uh, well, I've had, it's just been too much fun. <laughs> so overall, I think it's a fun movie, right? Um, I highly recommend it for people that like to have fun. 
I think, so I very much like espionage and spy, the serious stuff like James Bond. Um, I haven't really been a fan of the ones that play on those tropes or the comedy ones. Like you mentioned spy with Melissa McCarthy. Those are fine. I'm watching it for Melissa McCarthy and like everything else that happens in it. I'm just kind of like, eh, mm. it's fine. But this one, I was like, I could see myself enjoying multiple of these. Yeah. Like it, the cast was fantastic. The action was just as good as any other action movie. So I'm here for it. Like it takes me a lot for like a genre that I really like to be like, okay, I like this like spoof. Yeah. I think that it's interesting because, you know, I'm thinking of the Mila Kunis, Kate McKinnon movie, the, Mm. the spy who's something or other, I don't know, but it was trying too hard to be a serious spy movie. Right. And it's like, but you have Kate McKinnon in one of the lead roles. Like, don't lean into the series. You should be leaning into the comedy. Whereas this, I feel like is very uh, cognizant of what it is and what it's trying to do. And it's not trying too hard in either direction. It just exists in this sort of silly world. And I think that's what makes it work. Yeah. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And I think that you shouldn't take the movie too seriously because it's playing with you. It knows, it knows that it's hilarious. And the inclusion of like, just having the cat there Alfie I was just going to bring up Alfie is great because like it didn't really like if you took the cat out of it, it's like, yeah, there's going to be some moments where like they need to go back for the cat and all this stuff. But like, I just liked the addition of it. I like those like motifs or like those things that just happen in movies where it could just be synonymous with it. Also, cats are fantastic. Well, yeah, I have to admit that I was very worried about Alfie the entire time when she was like when she decided not to go back for him. I was like. I Burn this, in hell. I hate this movie. <laughs> this movie just completely lost me. I was the so cat's scared. fine. Yeah, this the cat survives. The cat is fine. Uh, so those of you who are always concerned about the animals, <laughs> we're letting you know now the cat survives. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So any final thoughts before we get into Matthew Vaughn's interview? Oh, I just, like I said, I think it was a lot of fun. Um, I would definitely be interested in seeing more of these characters, more of this world. Uh, and you know, I think that this Vaniverse is, is growing, which is exciting. What did you call it in the interview? You said Vontasy. Yeah, I called it Vontasy. <laughs> That's like how he constructs a movie. Yeah. It's so good. He takes a normal <laughs> plot and then he injects it with Vontasy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> how about you? What are your final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I've said them. You know, I, I think somebody that likes the serious stuff, I like that this drew me in. With also being like totally engrossed in it. Um, Samuel Jackson's character, I thought it was just Samuel L. Jackson having fun. Like no notes on that. I loved his like spy cave. Did you ever notice that in a spy movie, like nothing downloads faster? I mean, uh, slower than in a spy yeah. movie. Yeah. And the constant like, it wasn't even like we had to wait for it to download. They kept stopping it and going. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> Let it, go. it felt like being back in the dial up days when you yeah. were trying to download one song and it took three hours. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Matthew Vaughn interview. Let's get into it. Uh, so let's talk about this amazingly fun, fantastical, twisty, turny movie you created. Um, first things first, I was wondering. So I know that you read Argyle as a novel. What was it about the novel that made you want to turn it into a movie? Um. Well, the actual book, I, well, I was, and it's, it's a really weird story between the book and this Jason Fuchs and the screenwriter, and 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 it all came together. But I just saw the opportunity of having fun of creating two worlds of fictional spies and non-fictional spies colliding together. That was so. So it it, it when a creative spark happens, I, it, why is 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 it just happens? I, and so it's, it's it's and when it does, I just follow it. That's awesome. You got to go with your gut when you feel the feeling. <laughs> you have to go with your gut full stop in life. Absolutely. All right. I'm writing that down. That's that's getting tattooed for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Where? So I, no, don't answer that. <laughs> we'll do just yeah. an arm, an arm or something like that. No. Yeah. We, <laughs> okay. yeah. um, so now taking that story of that novel, I know that I had read that you had said it was kind of a straightforward story of the character of Argyle. When mm-hmm. you're looking at it, how in your mind, what I'm calling adding these sort of the vauntacy of it all, adding this fantastical moments of 
I think we're going to need a smoke dance in here. I like the Von to see. It sounds like in a German. I want to see uh, <laughs> this film, but I'm going to I'm going to be using that as a joke to my in-laws. So, <laughs> yeah. Carry on. Sorry, I shouldn't have No, said. feel yeah, free to yeah. use it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I was wondering, how do you, when you're looking at a straightforward story, go, all right, I know we could beef it up here. How does that sort of happen? Is that between you and Fuchs? Is that just happening on your own beforehand? Yeah, no, Jason and I had a really fun collaboration because he, he we, we, we definitely approach problems. I mean, in a weird way, we are we're argyle and, and and you know he yeah we are we, we we sort of life imitating art you couldn't have two more opposing ways of writing and creating movies but getting to the same destination should we say um we just get there differently so we definitely pushed each other's boundaries and he would always be trying to push me to the safer zone and i'm trying to push him into the danger zone and we ended up with argyle well, and I love that. I really feel like you can see that balance there, right? There are these thought-provoking conversations and these very fun action moments, but then there's choreography and ice skating. Um, and that balance is what makes Argyle so magic. Yeah. Uh, so Thank now, you. you're very welcome. I'm so to grab us some coffee. To drink. Oh, yeah. Coffee is definitely needed. Caffeine is always good. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about the cast a little bit. Uh, it's pretty much stacked Oscar winners, Grammy winner, Emmy winners, and all of the above. Um, was there any character that you knew that you wanted to cast first when you were bringing the project to life? Um, it was the triumvirate of Ellie. Cause I, you know, I try to cast for, for chemistry and balance and instant recognize, you know, so that the audience know who this character is. So in my, you know, it was for me, it was always Ellie in the middle uh, Aiden Wilde and Argyle on each side. So you can tell I'm tired that I'm trying to remember the, the character and the lead name. <laughs> um, um, so uh, yeah, that was that was. And it, so I had rough sketches, and I was mad, and I you know, and I saw the three of them together. Uh, you know, so but I wouldn't have committed to any of them without knowing all three were right. So it was mm -hmm. like casting a triumvirate instead of a single person. Yeah, there's there's always that magic in the trifecta of of roles throughout books and television. And so this yeah. is definitely a, a fantastic one that came together. Um, and not to get too serious here, but Nepo babies are a topic that have been coming up a lot recently. So how was it having your own child chip on set and in the film? <laughs> you have no idea this whole Nepo uh, baby <laughs> slash cat uh, debate has been interesting. Um, I... I, I, I my theory on Nepo babies and cats is um, um, they have to be better than the rest because if you're going to be given that leg up, you know, I always, I always say in, in life, um, contacts or or privilege or birth, all these. Things, if you've been given an, a, a a a door that opens for you, you better be better than everybody else because you've been given been lucky enough to have that. So therefore, mm. and by the way everyone's going to be rooting for you not to succeed and if you do succeed they're only going to say you succeeded because of your 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 luck mm. uh, but ultimately you still have to have talent and tenacity to get there um and i would say with the cat um <laughs> he did brilliantly i mean to his credit i think what happened is because i think he just thought he was home away from home he saw me and he was chilled and and i think his performance and i'm, I'm and i'm actually not joking when i say this because i worked with an acting cat which we fired beforehand um I think because he was so relaxed and he wasn't when these so-called trained animals, they spend the whole time looking at their trainer, waiting for a treat and their eye lines off and they're always got the wrong energy. They're just in, what do you want me to do mode? So they'll sit, they don't sit down like dogs don't snap to a sit dogs. Mm. You know, they go around, they look around, they, they, they sit in a casual way, a trained dog. When they sit, they, I mean, they literally look like they're about to get shocked by a thousand <laughs> volts if they don't sit on command. So they don't, you know, dogs, yeah, and most people's dogs aren't that well trained in life. So mm. it looks weird when you've got a family and the dog is is sort of bouncing around with his weird energy. Um, <laughs> so I really think that's what happened with um with Chip. I think he he came across as a real cat because he was just hanging out. A hundred percent. And I love seeing Chip on the red carpet. I follow Chip on Instagram. I think oh, you do. Chip, wow. Yeah. Chip is a breakout star from Argo. I mean, for sure. it's so <laughs> surreal. But hey, you know what? 
life is a truly original um roller coaster so the fact that chips become i mean it's my daughter's freaking my daughter went to um there was a there was a an event here and she said everyone was walking around with chip bags with chip in the back you know put, and she was just went this is my cat and i'm seeing him everywhere how and he's like daddy how am i meant to feel about this i mean she's only 13 and i was oh. like i don't know i just don't <laughs> know so um yeah bizarre a surreal moment sure watching yeah. everyone walk around um jumping back to the humans in the cast uh, I was so interested in the fight scene on the train. And so there again are those three characters. We have Ellie in the middle and she's watching, you know, from her literal point of view, we're seeing it go from, you know, Argyle to Aiden back and forth. So in directing a scene like that, how are you piecing it together? How are you making sure that it all fits together so perfectly with the choreography? Well, you have to shoot it twice. So, so, um, and, and that was fun designing an action sequence that again, these two, they, they had to fight the same person in the same manner, but scrappy versus, you know, like the super spy versus the scrappy Suave. spy, let's say yeah. it. And they, um, but they had to get to that same place. So they, you know, they both have to win. So how, and, and, um, and then having the fun and then on the day, you know, we'd we'd only been totally um, concentrating on the fight choreography, and then I was doing that. I was like, "Wait, hold on! Um, I think we can do a bit more with this." So I was like, "Henry, do you mind saying the lines as well? I think we could actually intercut the line." I said, "Why are we only doing this with the fighting? Let's do it with the drama." And poor Henry's like, "Wait, you want me to uh, what? How much dialogue do I need to say?" And I was like, "Just just try it." And and then I said, "This is working." And then during the fight, I was like, "Henry, actually, stop, stop! Look at the camera. Do me a favor, just." Just slowly put your hand through your hair and give me a <laughs> wink. And he's like, really? I went, fuck it. What have we got to lose? And then the girls were fighting with him. And I went, I went and I said to the two of them, don't tell him anything. Just give him a kiss on his cheeks. So he was getting ready to fight. And they went, mm, and he was like, what the hell's going on? So we were, it, it was a, a lot of seeing some magic happening and, and just being brave enough to try it. Because I always say, look, we can try it. If it doesn't work, Hopefully, I'll be clever enough not to put it in the movie. So <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it is, yeah, it's different. So yeah, so that's good. Very cool. Nothing like keeping Henry on his toes on this on the day, yeah, right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, since we're just chatting about Henry, I have to know how did the flat top come about for Argyle? Well, I, I needed again. We're trying to create a super spy that doesn't exist, right? So I thought, how can we create an icon in five frames you know and so that's why the first shot you're seeing the flat top from behind and then you see Julia Leapy. oh my god who is this guy and it comes around and he's like oh my god Henry Cavill look at his hair um <laughs> and he must be a very confident man um and good at what he does because if no one's everyone's like wow um and and I just wanted to create a silhouette that have it here on the cap where you can go okay argyle is he's the argyle pattern nero and flat top so i needed to you know it was all about building an icon immediately and you instant it. icon just add water and stir you know what i mean so beautiful everybody why. needs it pick it up at your local supermarket yeah uh, so and i have to say that i'm a i'm a librarian in my nine to five so I feel like, and obviously a geek. So the minifigure. Well, so you're a librarian. I have to ask you that because how are libraries doing in the modern world? Libraries in the modern world are doing okay. They're becoming these amazing community centers where folks can go and learn new topics, be with their peers, talk about things that are going on. Um, you know, we are offering amazing eBooks and audio books that you can download right on your phone. But of course, uh, being in the libraries, being a center for information, um, it's tough out there, especially here in the U.S. with book bans and book challenges. So brave librarians are stepping up to fight the good fight to keep books on shelves. But, you know, it's, no, it's I love books. That's right. Look, this whole movie is a celebration of a book and there is a book. And we, we, we please get make sure your library has a copy of Argyle book one um, and make people read it because it's, it's, a, it's it, you know, we also wrote the book to try and get younger 
people reading as well because it's you know it's all about the 18 19 year old argyle mm -hmm. uh, and i think reading is so important i mean if people say how did you become a film director and i used to read lots of books and the books put the images in my mind more than any i i still an image from reading is still more powerful to me than anything i see in a film um and you know the the, the mind is better than the camera um so um uh, I applaud you for your day job. Thank you. And I appreciate your support and your love of books. And that was one of the things that was so exciting about this movie was seeing books and seeing uh, Ellie as an author being celebrated, um, you know, yeah. and, and having people want to see her speak. And of course, the collector of the books, uh, their spines next to each other on the shelf was also delightful. Um, so that's thank you. That's really great. Um, I we've spoken a little bit about fight choreography. I want to talk about the dance choreography that happens yes. in the movie, specifically the beautiful, the amazing Whirly Bird. Um, yeah. Where yeah. did that come from? Um, well, the whole movie is about disco. Uh, when we wrote the script, and then we, we did we disco music makes you feel happy and stuff. And then I looked at a lot of disco choreography from the seventies and early eighties. And there was something I saw that was sort of similar to the Whirly Bird. Um, and I was like, okay, that's, we're going to take that because we, we can also use that later in fights. And it's, it's again, it's iconic and memorable. And like, it, it, you know, the opening sequence by the end of it, you're like, what am I watching? Um, <laughs> um, and so, and, and well done, Henry Cavill. He can actually do it. Her and him and Dewar just did it while we were really wires and ropes and everything ready and safety harnesses and they're like oh, no 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 we'll just do it and what a, up they went and i was just like well done the two of you i was wondering how that was rigged no rig needed huh no rig needed that is definitely impressive i was i was sitting in the screener my husband and i uh, who's my co-host on the podcast yeah and you know there were just moments where i was whispering under my breath the whirly bird it's coming mm. it's coming so it made an impact for sure well so That's I wanted nice to, to yes, yes, you mission succeeded there. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, about our, I mean, we're going to put spoiler alerts on our review in the interview. So our, our end credit scene where we do see our young Argyle and yes. it seems to be connecting to the Kingsman universe. Am, am I right in, in that? Well, all, all, all I can say is if you are Asian Argyle and you, you're, 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 you're known for your flat top and your your nero colored colored jackets where would the man go if you're a super spy to get a super beautifully made tailored suit and there's only one place to go heck yeah all right um i was i was wondering so um are we looking at more argyle films in the future well that's really up to the audience um mm. so I wanted to make a sequel to Stardust, but no one in America decided to go see it. So that got, you know, burnt. Um, um, but um, yes, there's things planned, but you guys have to go see it. Simple right, as that. We'll, it's really we'll simple. Make sure. if, there's a, if there's a desire for a sequel, we will make one. If there isn't, then, you know, we're not that stupid. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and, you know, just as a wrap up question here uh, on our podcast, we cover lots of things that are based on comic books. And in the past, you have created films from comic books. Is that something that you would look to do in the future? Films from, if I found a comic book that I loved, yeah, it's, okay. or, you know, source materials. I said, it's an instinctive thing. You read something like I'm doing a musical at the moment. Yeah. And, um, and David Chazelle sent me the script. And I read it. I mean, I want to make this movie. I like it was a it was it was a I made the decision on page 10 and by page 50. I was suddenly emailing everyone in my office saying Fed sent the script saying, get reading. I'm halfway through it. I want to do this. And then I got t terrified each page going, oh, what? is something going to happen to stop me doing it. But my instinct got bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the end, I said, this is such a this is it. Let's go. Let's go. Is this your first musical that you're doing? Um, oh, my first full musical, I think, as you've just seen, yeah, I think there's musical moments without anyone singing <laughs> in, in Argyle. That's one of the reasons, by the way, as well. There is some method to my madness. I was like, well, let's see what 
I'll start thinking about what's it like working with choreographers and dancing. And so I was just wanting, you know, so the bits of Argyle, that was that. So. And then uh, my last question, simple one. I, I know that uh, Argyle was a bit of a pandemic project that started by watching movies with your kids. Uh, have right. they seen Argyle? And I was wondering what they thought of it. Um. Yeah, they've definitely seen it. They, they, they. I got thumbs up from my harshest critics. Um, <laughs> they really enjoyed it. I think they enjoyed it more. I think they were surprised because this one, they were involved a lot more because they saw how you make the sausage, and when you see how you make the sausage, you know, uh, I, I've never been to a sausage factory, but I got a feeling I won't enjoy the sausage as much if I went to one. So I, th and I think they were quite surprised. Because when you when you test movies and even with film executives, there's you know there's like like twenty percent of a real lift um, when a movie before a movie's finished when you you know from the CG the the music the grade all this stuff suddenly it becomes a movie, um, and even on this one some executives are saying I think you should get just get rid of the ice skating, mm -hmm. you don't need it it's too much and I'm like. I don't know. I, I think when it's finished, there's going to be a pretty spectacular scene. And now we finished it. And even the executives are like, oh, my God, we never imagined it. That's what it would be like. And I was like, yeah. So sometimes um, you got to you have to. We said at the beginning of this this podcast, follow your instinct. Trust your gut. It won't let you down. Your head can let you, it gets you. Your head gets you in trouble. Your gut keeps you balanced. And it can really lead us to an amazing place where there is a fight scene with guns, ice skating. And yeah. that's what we needed for sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the men in the white coats, are, they're outside waiting for me, but I to get a few more interviews. <laughs> Don't let them get you. There's too much cool. goodness in the world that you need to bring. Uh, well, Matthew, thank you again so much for chatting with me on a bite of. It really means a lot. And I'm so excited for the world to see Argyle. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So that was a very cool way to spend a Wednesday morning chatting with the director of Argyle. Um, just like such a cool, chill guy. And it's so interesting to see how chill he is, but the zany, wacky things that he can think of. Yeah. And it's like he says, I love how he's like making a joke, but he's telling it to you seriously. Mm -hmm. I was just like, this dude's cool. Yeah. Also, his Argyle hat. Yes. I want it. The, the fit was on point. The glasses, yeah. the Argyle hat. I mean, the man knows what he's doing. Obviously, he's married to Claudia Schiffer, people. <laughs> so they're and Chip the cat is his son. It's his son. <laughs> they're they're just an awesome family all yeah. around. But I really just loved some of the details he told us about, about how uh, you know, the, our, our favorite Dua Lipa scene, how there was absolutely no rigging involved. And, you know, Henry Cavill can just lift Dua Lipa up and hold her in that spin. <laughs> I mean, he should be able to. Yeah, with those pecs. Yeah. It's not just for putting computers together. The dude's folk. been The Witcher and Superman. Yeah. He could do the whirly he bird. Could, he could lift a Lipa. <laughs> he could lift a Lipa. For sure. For sure. <laughs> But what an awesome opportunity. I mean, this entire Argyle thing, getting to go to the screening and talking to Matthew, I am fully invested and I really hope that you all watch Argyle. And I love bringing all of you along with us. That's what this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. You're at our table. We're having fun with the things that we love. Let's see what's next. Let's snack together. Our, our mm -hmm. podcast is like a charcuterie board. You can <laughs> we, we always have tons of variety out there. So pick and choose what you like. Yeah. One, you know, we're covering Percy Jackson for months and then we switch to this, you know, because that's, that's how you consume media anyway. You know, mama, that's pop culture one yeah. at a time. <laughs> okay. All right. So till next time. Bye, folks. Bye.